Hello everyone, and welcome to a special edition of the Whip and Chat, which will be the Walk and Chat. Oh yeah. So today Luna and I are going to take you on a bit of a stroll, and hopefully you'll actually be able to hear what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm actually going to move you just a little closer. There we go. So how are you doing? Happy Wednesday. We're going to stop and sniff everything. And I'll try to give you some beautiful views of my local area. And hopefully the wind won't cut in too much. And if it does, I suppose you'll be listening to a voiceover. <laughs> How are you doing? I hope you're all doing well. Um, this week has been quite the week. Um, I have just finished actually doing a lot, a lot of work um, in the house today. Yeah, we have to stop for everything. Hey, okay. at least you get to see the street. Come on. Today, we, we went, oh, there's a car coming. So I went through all of the, um, all of the crystal and all of the teapots and things like that, trying to make sure that I could put them away in the attic safely. And it's been a success so far. Hang on. <laughs> this is the busy part of the road. I should have waited. It. <laughs> um, been a success so far. Look at these beautiful flowers. Gorgeous hydrangeas and lilies. Luna is sniffing. Um, and yeah, to be honest, I've not had much time for crafting this week. So I did ask on socials and on the YouTube community tab, I asked if anybody had questions. So we're going to answer those questions in just a few minutes, but I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who has been watching my videos and interacting on my social platforms. If you don't follow me already on Instagram or Facebook, please do. I am Rachel Ray Official on Instagram and Rachel Ray FB on Facebook. So now that we have that out of the way, <laughs> let's get up this hill. It's quite steep. I don't know if you can tell, but might take a little bit out of me, so we might as well talk about all the things. Look at those beautiful nasturtiums. Gorgeous. All right, Luna and I will make our way up this hill slowly, <laughs> and then we'll come back down later. The last time that I diamond painted was on Twitch, on or no, Tuesday, yesterday. I am filming this Wednesday evening. But the cleaning and packing really, I, I just went with it, you know? You know when you get really focused? Oh, sorry. We're almost we're getting to the top of the hill. You can barely see at the moment, but... Yeah, you know when you get in the zone with something, and like, you're, uh, you can't step away from it until it's actually done? That's, that's what today was like. So, I started around half 11 or 12, and I got in there, and I started to separate all of the, you know, 
maybe something had gotten broken or damaged along the way. Luna. <laughs> I think she saw something. Did you see something? Um, and I would separate that out. And then, good girl. Um, <clears throat> I tried to put everything into groups. Go on, sweetie. So I put things into groups of, you know, um, these sets belong together. I was really looking for whole sets of things like, I don't know, uh, you know, a particular glassware. Um, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to actually get anywhere. Hold on. Okay. So that was most of my day. Look at it. Oh, look how beautiful it is today. Stunning. So, this is where I live. It's probably too windy. But over here is Valencia Island. And this little island is Begnish. And over here is the other side of our peninsula. That's the Firtha River. Sorry, I just realized that it's probably right in your ear. So yeah, we did, I did as much as I could. Um, separating things out, and bubble wrapping them, getting them into some kind of order. And eventually up in the attic. Because this stage, we've moved in to our, our new home. James's family home where he grew up. Uh, <laughs> cars, we can't escape them. Um, <clears throat> and we've had three dumpster loads of stuff that we could get rid of in the house because it was old, broken, not easily resellable. And that was kind of just what we were looking at. Look at the sheep. Sheep. Oh, and now we're at the top of the road. So ma'am has smelled something. This is where we've come from. That is uh, Karen Tool and Kanukna Dubber on the right. The big one. So I think today was a big success because not only did I get all the kind of valuable things taken care of and um, put away, but also I went through a lot of bags of or unorganized things, so when we left our last house, there was some frantic packing going on, <laughs> and um, I know that if you were watching my Patreon vlogs, you would have seen some of the frantic packing. But, and also, small plug, I do weekly vlogs where I bring you into my personal life a little closer, and we talk about things that I don't normally talk about on my channel. So if you'd like to see that, uh, I believe that at the moment it is set at the price of buying me a lunch from a fast food restaurant once a month. <laughs> Um, and I really appreciate the support of my Patreon members because they are helping me through this YouTube algorithm mess up where my videos just don't get the same reach as they used to. So I appreciate you so, so much. You have no idea. Anyway, um, I started 
taking bin bags and dumping things like drawers of things into these bags and it wasn't until today July 3rd that I went through them and we moved in in February so uh, you know more pressing matters than well the contents of my entryway doors or drawers or whatever was looming so uh, I did all of that too and now the sitting room is looking much better I think maybe with one more day um, I'm I'm gonna pencil in Friday to really try and get into the room Once that cloud disappears, it's going to be absolutely stunning. You watch. We will come back this way. So, that, that was my day in a nutshell. And then this evening, we, well, James was asked to help with my friend's ceiling. Apparently it is caving and he needs some help. Ooh, Luna. <laughs> well, you can have a look at the blackberry bush while I wait for her. Because Luna only has three legs. She sometimes gets caught up in the lead. Um, and she's flying it now. I put her on the extra long lead just in case, but she actually doesn't move away from me too much. She just needs to stop a lot. Um, so yeah, James is out fixing a roof. Well, a ceiling, not a roof. The inside, not the outside. Right, Luna? And so I decided, you know what? Luna and I can go for a nice long walk. So I'm going to try to bring up some questions and answer them for you. I don't know if our video today is going to be as long as it normally is, but I wanted to give you a little sneak peek because this is kind of what I do during our vlogs. <laughs> so I'll be right back with the questions. All right. So I'm going to start with most recent, um, and I've got... Um, to Beast one that asked me what's your favorite thing about Ireland and least favorite thing about Ireland I'm from Canada and one day I hope to visit Ireland and Scotland and explore my ancestry will you please recommend okay <laughs> let's do one at a time so favorite thing about Ireland is definitely that I feel super safe here I've never had a really terrible encounter not like I used to have in other places and I can walk around at night and not feel like I'm gonna get hurt but then again I live in the countryside I live really really rural it's like a touristy town so uh, it's not it's not Dublin <laughs> you know it's not an inner city uh, so I feel really safe here and that is huge to me because I also lived in South Korea and at the end of my time in South Korea, I did not feel safe. Are you going to stick with me now? <laughs> Hang on, I'm going to change her lead. All right. <clears throat> now that I've changed the strap a bit, she's a bit closer to me. Uh, the least favorite thing. Ooh. I'm going to say this as it's a general thing. My least favorite thing about living somewhere you weren't born is always being the outsider. So no matter how long you've lived somewhere, on face value, people are going to treat you differently. I've lived in Ireland for 10 years now, and when they find out I'm an American, they treat me different. So... 
I think that's my least favorite part, but I know that um, no matter how long I live here, I'll never be a born in Ireland Irish person. Does that make sense? Um, but, you know, that doesn't bother me as much. I just can't really think of anything <laughs> very negative to say. Um, but yes, you should absolutely come and visit. And if you ever come to the Ring of Kerry, please, please send me a message. Because it would be lovely to meet anybody who wants to meet up with me. Just hit me up. Give me a message. Um, will you recommend a diamond painting for me? I like dragons, camping, sports, and lots of color. Not sure if this info would help should you accept my request. <laughs> it would have seemed a fun thing to ask. Cheers, Kim. P.S. Huge fan of your channel. Thank you so much, Kim. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, as for diamond painting, dragons, camping, sports, and lots of color. Um, there's a lot of diamond paintings. Ooh, look. Fox loves so pretty. Don't touch them. They're actually poisonous. Um, diamond paintings. Leave it. Leave it. That was a dead bird. Sorry. Um, diamond Art Club has a really good selection of dragons. Um, camping sports and lots of color. Uh, lots of color options as well. But to be fair, I am going to point you all in the direction of two Facebook groups, which are really, really great. One has a list of all of the licensed companies of diamond painting, and that's Diamonds and Emeralds. Um, they have an exhaustive list, <laughs> like so many companies that they've researched to see which ones are licensed, and they put them in the links in the group. Uh, if you don't do Facebook, I'm sorry for giving this recommendation, but, you know, it's kind of the way that it works for information's sake. Also, Crafters Anonymous, Mrs. Coffee, you should check it out. You could ask any question there. People will help. So if you're looking for a specific kind of painting, some people find great pleasure in finding specific artwork for you and what you're looking for, because they like to browse a catalog. So good luck, and I've hearted your comment to show that I've answered. All right. Um, <laughs> yay, it's Anna. Hi, Anna. Anna is a really good friend of mine who is also on Twitch, Sunny Side Up Anya, A-N-Y-A. Um, Anna's been with me for a very, 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 very long time. Wonderful friend, lives in Japan at the moment. And, uh, I love you, girl. <laughs> Next one is, oh, here it is. Sylvia, Sylvia W. And we're getting to come up upon a horse. Hang on, Sylvia. I bet you and just about everybody else wants to see the horse. Hello. Hello, my love. How are you? Are you keeping? Are you keeping? It's a nice evening, isn't it? Mmm, grass. Do you want a flower? One of these? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're a good one. You're a real good one. Come here. I love horses. You know, I had a horse when I was younger. Yes. I have nothing else though, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's my phone. Yeah. Bye. Um, <laughs> I had a horse growing up. His name is Doc. He wasn't really mine, he was actually my grandfather's, but still. I got to grow up riding horses, it was fantastic. All right, what craft? Did you learn first? How old and who taught you? When and how did you discover diamond painting? 
my first ever craft ever was crochet. Um, my grandma taught me. I think I was 10-ish, maybe, 9, 10, something like that. Um, she crocheted all the time. Her mother crocheted, her grandmother crocheted, everybody crocheted. We had doilies from Ireland, like, you know, going way, way back. So, lots of crochet. Um, I did not do doilies. <laughs> I think I made a scarf and eventually I made a blanket, you know, nothing too, nothing too big. The fuchsia, the Montbrecia and the sheep, lots of sheep. That's the way to get up the hill. If you are here, go up that hill. It is beautiful up there. Bush. You good? She's got to take a pit stop. When and how did I discover diamond painting? Uh, in spring of 2018, I saw a Facebook ad for diamond painting as a stress relieving hobby, and I was skeptical, not gonna lie. Um, I thought that it was going to look weird or gaudy or um, silly and I skip those ads all the time, you know? I scrolled past those ads, I was like, nah, not for me. But the more that they showed someone actually diamond painting, the more I was like, wow, that looks really comforting. So I ordered a kit. Back then, uh, there wasn't licensed diamond painting. You just got it from a factory from AliExpress. And so I tried a couple kits. I then got a custom for my grandfather while he was still alive. Then I got like other gifts for other family members and I was able to give them to them on Thanksgiving. If, if I'm able, <coughs> If I'm able, I will put a card in so that you can watch that video if you want. Um, me giving them their diamond paintings for Thanksgiving. Uh, it was like an early Christmas present. My grandma, grandpa, and my dad all at once. It was great. Um, I look a complete mess, but it is real. <laughs> it happened. Uh, and Sylvie also asked, What's your favorite thing about living in Ireland? I think I answered that. <laughs> but also, the views. Please. Since you recently visited the US, what are the five biggest differences between life in the US versus Ireland? I'm sure that a lot of you don't want me to get political with this. Most of the reasons that I don't live in the United States are political. Um, but also, in conjunction with that, I also find lifestyle here to be so much more relaxed, beneficial for my mental health, so many positives. Okay, we're going to turn around and we're going to go back the other way because we're coming down on the downslope and I don't think that walking through the town is going to do us any favors because I'm going to have to stop a lot. I'm sorry that I can't give you an exhaustive list. If you would like me to give you a very specific list, please feel free to email me. <laughs> but I don't want to go into too much detail because I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to anger some people, to be fair. Um, but yeah, life is so much better here as just a normal person living their life. Luna's sniffing something. Farm to be. How did you handle the transition between the U.S. and Ireland? And also, do you and your husband and his family know Gaelic? It's a beautiful language. I've always wanted to learn, but it's scary. So, 
uh, how did I handle my transition? I had lived in South Korea for four years before I moved here. So I had already been an expat from the US for a while before we decided to come here. And we weren't even really thinking about being here full time at that time. Uh, we were gonna skip and go over to Spain or Italy or something and keep using our teaching degrees. But uh, it was not easy. My transition was not easy. Uh, and it's not necessarily because of Ireland. It's actually because of the paperwork and being rejected and, you know, lots of things, money troubles, feeling insecure and not really knowing where I was going to go and what I was going to do and what job I was going to have here. Uh, cause this wasn't the plan. <laughs> But it all worked out in the end. But at that time, I was massively stressed and depressed. And it was really, really tough, actually. It was actually really tough. Um, I think that you have to have a sort of resilience to do what I did. And I guess I deserve a pat on the back. My, you know, 20, how old was I? 26 year old self deserves a pat on the back for doing a big jump like that but I always wanted to live abroad anyway so it's not it's not that weird um, it was just really hard to be fair oh I forgot to heart Sylvia okay then back down Candace Candace Rigby and Penny Weddig want to know, what's your favorite putty and how do you get such a cool snapping noise? I don't experience that fun sound. Luna's sniffing, so we're just going to look at this gate for a bit. So, I have tried many a putty, many a wax, and to be fair, uh, my favorite small business that makes putty is hi buddy <laughs> my favorite small business that does putty is in the UK and they're crafting cat UK um, not that the other stores are no good but that's just one of my favorites come here you see that I have a collie so you're very standoffish um I have a lot of favorites but that one really smacks. If you're looking for that smacking sound, that is where the smacking sound comes from. It comes from the putty. Um, look at these foxgloves. Oh, so pretty. And the fuchsia. Gorgeous. Um, that's where the smacking sound comes from. The snapping noise is putty. Um, wax for me, has never really given that satisfactory sound. I also have tried Randa's Crafty Corner. Uh, th that's really good there in the US. Abigail's or Abby's, which is in the UK. I haven't tried all of them because being in Europe, there are not any putty stores in Europe that I've found. And with the way things are with shipping these days, unfortunately, I have to ship within my zone. Otherwise, I get hit with lots of fees. So, I'm really sorry that I can't answer that into the fullness. Maybe, <laughs> maybe if things change in the next while with my channel, maybe I can try some more shops. We'll see. <gasps> Come back. Come back. Come here, friend. He's like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> All right. Are there any more questions on YouTube? No. Okay. All right. We have one from Diane. Diane Jones Denop. I'm a person who also moved from, oh, who also has a channel, by the way. You should actually definitely go check them out. I'm a person who also moved from my home country to Europe 
to be with the man I married. How did you find getting used to being in a country that was totally new to you? So, um, <laughs> I kind of answered. Uh, one really important thing is to have a network of people who care about you. Um, you got to make friends no matter where you are. And sometimes when you get to a certain age, you have to try really hard because <laughs> you're moving into an environment where likely a lot of those people have known each other for a long time. If you're in a bigger city, you don't really have that problem because most people are like, you know, getting there from university or, you know, they're coming in for jobs. So they might not be local, but like here, here, <laughs> um, it's, it's totally different. You're walking in, everybody knows who you are immediately. They're like, oh, that's that girl that's going with that guy and, you know, or guy that's going with the girl, girl going with the girl, whatever it is. And they will know who you are immediately and they will want to know everything about you and it'll feel really invasive and difficult. So I think the best thing is you know, listen to your gut and like trust yourself and um, be open to making friendships with people and learn the local humor. I think that's super important. Um, <laughs> humor is an understated part about being a human. And if you can learn how to communicate with people to make them laugh, then your job is like as being becoming friends with people is almost over already because that's all really people want uh, from socializing is to have a good time. So one of the things that I had to learn almost immediately was Irish humor. It's very different from American humor. Uh, it's, it's extremely different from British humor. I will say that. Um, and I think that it help me fit in a lot better once I had learned that. Uh, so yeah, I think that if you want to feel a bit more comfortable in your skin when you come to a new place, the best thing to do is to kind of learn the, the humor of a place. And then, oh, there's a car coming. Hang on. Luna in. Hurry it. And then I'll go to here. Hang on. Sorry, I have to open up all the apps. Wrong app. Wrong button. <laughs> I've got two phones on me today. All right. Do 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 do. Oh, no, no. See my page. All right, there were no questions on Facebook. Okay, so that was it for questions. Fantastic. So, thank you for all your questions. Um, I hope that I answered succinctly. It's hard to tell. I'm gonna switch, switch hands now. Um, it's hard to tell if I'm answering the question that you want me to or if I've left something out. So uh, please feel free to leave another comment if you like about you know, more questions if you have them. But uh, it's, you know, it's nice to be able to answer your questions and spend some time with you. I really hope the audio is okay on this video. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is a typical walk that I take with Luna. Uh, not every day. We don't go up this way very often, but I feel like if I go into town, people will look at me weird. <laughs> Today I have my gimbal with me, which is a, it's a, an arm that attaches to my phone and it keeps it from shaking too much. It stabilizes the video for me quite a lot, more than 
I could do with my own hands. So I charged that up before we came out. And I tried really, really hard to find my microphone, because I have these microphones uh, that I could have clipped inside my sweater here. Um, but I, I, I ripped apart a load of boxes and bags and everything, and I could not find it. So, just looking to see if that cloud's gone away yet. Kinda. Not really. It's a really beautiful spot that I live in. Honestly, if you are able to come out to Ireland, like, please don't just stay in Dublin. <laughs> come down here for a couple nights. The best way to see this part of the world is actually at the moment through Airbnb because there's not many hotel rooms right now. That should change, hopefully. Um, but with everything going on in the world right now, a lot of our hotels are being used as accommodation um, for people seeking asylum, and that's fine. But there isn't much room for tourism at the minute. But if you get on to me, <laughs> if you're within like 45 minute radius, I will absolutely come and meet you. Um, Definitely, it would be worth my time. I love meeting people. And look, we have a standing stone and some sheep. The only downside is pose, <laughs> is that right now, the high temperature of this summer has been 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Literally like, 15 degrees Celsius is the max that we've seen this summer. It is July. It should be like 17, 18 right now on average. It's nowhere near that. So we are trying to get through it, but it is chilly. This is such a beautiful spot. I absolutely love walking through here. And, uh, fun fact, I'm going to bring you up to it here in a second. So you see the house just there, just there. I lived in the bottom, bottom flat of that house, uh, when we first moved here and they have cows <laughs> and they're so cute. They're so cute. Ooh, the lads are playing football down in the field down there. I don't know if you can hear them. But, here, I'll stop for a second. So, if you want to get to know Carsevine. So we have the cows. Uh, the church, you can't see it, but it's, it's over that way. So that's the big hill walking hill. It's really good for hill walking. It's not very big. Up there you can pick blueberries, or not blueberries, blackberries, sorry. And if you go over here, right there, oh wow, look the sun is coming right through. Let me zoom you in. That is Bally Carberry Castle standing out across the water. There's also ring forts nearby, which I don't think you'll be able to see. The reflections are probably from sheds, to be fair. It's hard to tell when the sun comes through like that, it's always hard to tell. And we call that the giant's arse. <laughs> Uh, it's really beautiful out here in the sea. So this is the Atlantic Sea, obviously the Atlantic Ocean. Um, but on the right hand side, you can see something that like dips down. Those are the cliffs. And um, it's very beautiful in the water there. And let's see if we can see the lads. There's one guy in the pitch. Two guys. 
That's our GAA pitch. GAA is our national sport. So it's like rugby meets soccer. It's hard to explain. It's an Irish sport, so you should definitely check it out. And yeah, let's zoom back out. keep going but yeah that's pretty much it from me today oh there's a car coming come on come here um, I'm going to go make some food I wish I could say hi to these cows hello they um, they're usually very very friendly um, they like to, you okay? You good? We're untangling. Yeah. Um, they're so sweet. I don't know if you've ever got to like be up close and personal with a cow before. <laughs> Hi. Ladies, gents, probably gents. Um, they're so sweet to one another. They're taking care of each other all the time. Really, really awesome. Really sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I used to live in this house at the bottom. And yeah, other than that, I think this week, so tomorrow, Thursday, I will be on Twitch. I'm always on Twitch on Thursday, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 a.m. Eastern, which is 1 p.m. British, Irish time. <gasps> you want to say hi? You want to say hi? Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Come here. Yeah. Yeah, come here. Boop. <laughs> You're good boys. They're so curious. Hi. Hi. Come here. Hi. Yeah. You just have to be calm with them. Hey. Okay, I think I've had enough. <laughs> you good? You good? You all good? Luna's had enough too. They're your friends. <laughs> um, okay, something you should know about me is uh, Rachel. Rachel communes with the animals. I'm like a doctor Doolittle. I always, I always talk to animals. It's always been that way. I'm probably weird. Most people wouldn't touch a cow, but I love cows. They're still there. <laughs> They're still looking at me. Um, so yeah, this has been a fun whip and chat. I hope you enjoyed the walk and chat. You know, special edition, special edition walk and chat. And I will leave it here. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful week. And I hope to see you all soon. Take care and stay safe out there. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.